Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome back to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. reporting for The Media Speaks. Uh, it doesn't look right, does it? I've got the entire studio in a mess because the lights that I am using as studio lights, there's only so much money here at The Correct Views. Hard to believe, I know. Um, so these lights are actually in the studio that's working on another project. Um, the band of passing time that I am probably with is entering the Alex Jones InfoWars contest and that lights are being used for that. So you're going to have to deal with the Saturday chill out hangout lighting for this show. All right guys, right into the news really quick. Um, all three of these stories do tie together. So what I'm going to do is give you the three stories so that you can look them up and read them. And then I'm going to pick parts out of them and I'm going to talk about things. They are, they're all sourced from these three articles. And there's a million other ones that I looked up on Drudge and Prison Planet. And there are a lot of people talking about this. Oh man, Paul Joseph Watson, Infowars, Europe, uh, 100,000 100, savings now considered wealthy, 100,000 euros. Um, this is also Infowars, Euro gr Group Head, Looting Bank Accounts, a Template for EU. And lastly, the last one is Economic Collapse, Michael Snyder, Words of Warning, Get Your Money Out of European Banks. Alright friends, in a nutshell, I'm going to tell you exactly what is going on. And then I'm going to give you some of the really strange, and I would argue extremely frightening quotes that are also going to be found therein. All of the people listening to this, if you have a bank account, unless it's absolutely, like, I know sometimes businesses have to have them. We'll deal with that in a minute. If you are a private citizen and you do not need, I don't want any make convenience of my car, need a bank account, and you have one, you are an idiot. And when they take your money, I'm not going to feel the least bit sorry for you if you're listening to this show right now because you are being warned. I have told people forever, do not trust banks. So Sam, what do you do with your money? I have a small chunk of what I'm saving in a mutual fund that is used for infrastructure, not corporations, uh, building uh, streets and roads and all that. And then I also have um, a place where I hide money. You do not need to hide money in your house. You can put them... You mean to tell me that you watching this can't think of one extremely secure place that you could put money? Nowhere. Other than your mattress, the first place a thief looks at. You mean to tell me you can't think of one? And if you're relying on these banks, let me tell you something. I used to keep money at the house, and I had about $500 stolen from me. It was right around Christmas, so I guess that doesn't really count as keeping it in the house. It happened during a Christmas party. You know what? Compared to the reaming, they say the haircut, no, the reaming that these people got, I am lucky to have lost the $500 compared to what banks do. And I'm going to give you a side note, too, as to why I quit using banks even before this. Um, I used to be a, a member of Bally's. I've heard they've gone out of business. If they haven't, and if that's not true, I hope they do. They are a dreadful company, and they used to go into my bank account and take out double and triple payments without me knowing about it. So I was bouncing checks like handballs all over the city. Uh, I finally just quit using banks. It was way, way too much work. And it just, there's no security there. Well, now there's even less. Listen to this. Oh, and my, never mind, some of you might not know my New Year's resolution, in case you're not following it, in case you don't know the story, I am going to be, rewind here. Last week, the banks of Cyprus, they had a tax started, and they are taking 40% of all people who have 100,000 euros or more in the bank, they are taking 40% of it out and keeping it from people like you and I in Cyprus. That's not conspiracy theory. That's not something that Sam thinks might happen. That is something that is 
happening. And I don't have a hundred thousand dollars. I nowhere near a hundred thousand dollars saved at all in any way, shape, or form. I'm about uh, ninety-nine thousand dollars short, maybe a little bit better. My point is that that's not rich. A house in Cyprus, I read, was a, a normal, small, one-bedroom house was between eighty-nine thousand and a hundred and thirty thousand. And the hundred and thirty thousand was if you uh, wanted to live in any place other than the hood of Cyprus. So, we're not talking about rich people. In this country, they'd be talking about people that made between eighty and dollars $100,000. I should say who had that in the bank. That's not okay, people. Paul Joseph Watson, Watson Infowars, the deal to save Cyprus, according to Cypriot President Anna... I'm so good with foreign names... Anatacities were struck in the best interests of the EU will inflict huge losses on wealthy savers of up to 40% of their bank deposits. You're not wealthy if you have $100,000 in the bank. People, please listen to me. Just listen to me. How is it that that means that you are a wealthy person? The people that got the warning that this were coming with the rich, wealthy people. The, the president had told a whole series of people to pull their money out that this was coming, but Joe Smith in Cyprus didn't get that warning. And if these banks would do it to Cyprus, guys, it's the same banks that we work with that so many conspiracy theorists call the New World Order. Well, I don't know if it's a New World Order or not. Maybe it's not. I think it is. But I'll tell you this, it's the same banks. That's not a conspiracy. So, you mean they would do it to Cyprus, but not to us? While savings accounts under 100000 will remain untouched, those who have scrimped and saved all their lives to amass a relatively modest sum of anything over that will face a haircut. Don't you love that? Let me find this, this one more quote in here that I absolutely have to get to. There it is. Anyone with an ounce of common sense who has over 100,000 euros deposited in European banks should now be scrambling to convert that into precious metals or at least spreading it out over smaller amounts between different banks. That is entirely true. And that's frightening. Because do you know in Cyprus right now, if you want to shut your bank account down and take all your money out, you can't get more than 100 euros out at a time? That's not okay. That's not a bailout plan. If I go into my neighbor's house and start taking her money to, because I'm financially broke, that's not a bailout package. That's not a tax. That is stealing. There's some more quotes. And th th this, is, this is a good candidate for Dump's Cap of the Month Award. I'm going to read you. What's this idiot's name first? Uh, Jerome de Sejbloom. D-I-G-E-S-S-E-L-B-L-O-E-M. It's an I chart, not a name. If there is a risk in a bank, our first question should be, okay, what are you in the bank going to do about that? What can you do to, have, to recapitalize yourself? If the bank can't do it, then we'll talk to the shareholders and the bondholders. We'll ask them to contribute in recapitalizing the bank. And if necessary, the uninsured deposit holders. It goes on. Uninsured deposit holders means anyone unfortunate enough to have scrolled away more than 100,000 euros under the delusion that it would not be swiped under their noses by the EU technocrats. There is no faith in the banking system in Europe anymore. And if you believe it can't happen here, most people that say that they can't, that something can't happen here have found themselves gassed or shot throughout most of history. Um, I'm going to read a big chunk of this paragraph because this is important. Personally, economic collapse, I never dreamed that they would go after private banks in Europe. But now that this precedent has been set, it should be apparent to everyone that no bank account will ever be considered 100% safe again. Hear it! Learn it! Without trust, a banking system simply cannot function. Unless, you know, maybe you do it in America where the average person has the intelligence of a clam. Without trust, a banking system simply cannot function. 
And right now, there are prominent voices on both sides of the Atlantic that are loudly warning that trust in the European banking system has been shattered and that people need to get their money out of those banks as quickly as they can. Yes, and those banks are the same banks we have! Even if you don't end up losing a, losing that, losing a significant chunk of your money, you could still end up dealing with a very serious capital controls that greatly restrict what you can be able to do with your money. Just look at what is already happening in Cyprus. Cash withdrawals through ATMs have now been limited to 100 euros a day, and when the banks finally do reopen, there will be strict limits on financial transactions in order to prevent a full-blown bank run. That means that if you were one of these conspiracy theorists who didn't trust the banks, if you've got more than $100 a day, you, you're balling, G. I gotta speak in language that Americans understand. Forgive me, all thinking people. You be banking, G. You got the money. Uh-huh. A hundred dollars a day, and they're rich. Because this is what happens when banks and restrictions step in. And they're calling it a deal. The main question surrounds the future of the island's largest lender, the Bank of Cyprus. If unsecured deposits above 100,000 euros at all banks are taxed, then large savings at banks of Cyprus are likely to be taxed between 20 to 25 percent. This is not a tax. This is them stealing the money to pay for the failings of the banks. So, Sam, what's the alternative? Iceland had the alternative. They arrested the bankers and put them in prison. Now, a lot of people have said that the only reason that this is happening to Cyprus is because Russia is laundering money through there. Let's pretend it's true. The only reason that I'm stealing from my neighbor to pay my debts is because I think my neighbor is growing marijuana in the basement. Now, my, my apartment's being renovated, so when I say that, there's nobody living there, it's an analogy, it's not really happening. If I say to you that I'm going to rob my neighbor because she's growing weed anyway, that money's illegal, so I'm just going to take it. That's still stealing, isn't it? Yup. So, to do this to the people of Cyprus, because Russia is laundering money through there, is the same thing. It's stealing. I don't care if Russia is running twice as much money through it and it leads laundered twice in the rent cycle. According to The Guardian, Moscow is already considering various ways that it might punish the EU. However, with Russian investors having an estimated 300 billion deposited in banks on the island, the growing optimism about the deal was accomplished by fears of retaliation from Moscow. Alexander Nekrasov, a former Kremlin advisor, said, If it is the case that there will be a 25% levy on deposits greater than 100,000 euros, then some Russians will suffer very badly. Then, of course, Moscow will be looking for ways to punish the EU. There are a number of large German companies operating in Russia. You could possibly look at freezing assets or taking assets. The Kremlin is adopting a wait-and-see policy. And it goes on. One thing is for sure, the Russians simply do not allow people to walk over them. Yes, because other than America, if it wasn't for Russia, we'd be speaking German today. They don't allow you to mess with Russia. And I'm no huge fan of a lot of the things that Russia do, but they're completely right in this. So people, what have we learned? Take your money anywhere but a bank. Because it's already happening. The same banksters run things here. The same banksters are the reason that America is facing an economic collapse and bankruptcies are going through the roof here. And I'm not claiming, in closing on this topic, to be some great economic mind. I may have to go bankrupt myself because there were no jobs here. And then I, I was driving cab, and then, of course, the everything died when the gas prices went up, and I got, I got swamped. But I'm excellent with money. Now that I have enough money to stay afloat, everything is paid, I can do more with a little bit of money than most people can with twice as much money. I'm excellent with it. I just don't have money to be excellent with. But 
So don't think just because I, and I admit it openly, have a very bad financial past. Don't misconstrue that to mean that I don't know what I'm talking about here. We're talking about apples and oranges. I didn't get where I'm at because I made a lot of really bad decisions in life. I ended up where I was at because I did the best I could with the hand that I was dealt. And there's a difference there. All right, guys. Any news Study up to 900 trillion becquerels of strontium-90 into the ocean from Fukushima plant. Direct discharges of cooling water. Now listen to a couple of things here. Strontium, for those of you that do not know, is one of the worst radionuclides known to man. And it likes to mimic other nutrients. It's not a nutrient, but it likes to mimic them. Um, one of the ways to prevent this is to take a lot of calcium. Um, to stay high on your potassium is another way. But um, strontium, when it gets into you, does damage. And even if you can minimize that damage, it does damage. It is a poison. All right. Japan journalists said a situation at Fukushima Daiichi was way worse than officially announced. Nuclear workers think that Fukushima can't be settled. They have problems everywhere. Let me word this to you this way. What you have in Fukushima, right there in the ground, is basically a small star. A star, as we learn from the song, is a mass of incandescent gas. Go ahead, sing, sing it. Okay, great. It is a self-sustaining, self-regulating nuclear fission that creates immense amounts of heat. Just like Fukushima. Do you know how much radiation comes off the sun? Do you know why we haven't been to Mars yet? The main reason is because we don't know how to prevent that radiation from destroying the astronauts from the sun. Well, we've got a little sun just poisoning the atmosphere, sending radiation, same radiation that's in a nuclear bomb, yep, sending radiation all over the place. Liquid dischargers of 90, of, uh, I do believe that's strontium 90, 90 SR, to the ocean were estimated, resulting in an inventory of 53 plus 1 terabecals of strontium 90. All right, I, I'm not going to go into what a terabecal is. Uh, one becquerel is one uh, nuclear reaction a second, meaning one little tiny explosion in your body, for lack of better words. Every time that happens, it damages cells. To be 53 plus or minus 1 terabecal, terabecal, that is a lot of reactions, people, going on. It would kill somebody rather quickly. In the insurance study in June of 2011, and total releases of strontium 9G ranging from 90 to 900 terabeckles, depending on the reported estimates of cesium-137 releases that are considered. Uh, they're testing cesium because cesium, the presence of CT, cesium proves things about the presence of strontium. It's a long story. I've been studying it for a long time, and it only half makes sense to me, but it's true. Results of the samples analyzed here evidenced a much stronger influence of direct discharges of cooling water into the sea in the oceanic background concentration rather than atmospheric. Basically what they're saying is that the Pacific Ocean is continuing to be so contaminated, you can't eat food out of there anymore. You really can't. And another thing that's important to remember, of course, is that this disaster is not over. And I'm not sure that it can be over. But as I just read, that's why I read it, continue avoiding tuna and to continue avoiding any food that comes out of Japan. Mail Online. The Great Green Con, number one, the hard proof that finally shows global warming forecasts that are costing you billions were wrong all along. One of the reasons, one of the justifications behind the facade and idiocy that is uh, nuclear power is that nuclear power does not help warm the planet. Neither do greenhouse gases. Man-made global warming is a lie. No, the world isn't getting warmer, as you may have noticed. Now we reveal the official data that's making scientists suddenly change their minds about climate doom. So will eco-funded MPs stop waging a green crusade on your money? Well, what do you think? 
The Mail on Sunday today presents irrefutable, for those of you Usher fans, that means can't be denied, irrefutable evidence that official predictions of global climate warming have been catastrophically flawed. The graph on this page, and it shows it, blows apart the scientific basis for Britain reshaping its entire economy and spending billions in taxes and subsidies in order to cut emissions and greenhouse gases. These moves have already added a hundred, a hundred billion a year for a, an average of 100 euros for a year to household energy bills. Steadily climbing, well I'm not going to read what the graph does, you go on the online you'll see it. But when the latest official global temperatures from the Met Office are placed over the predictions, they show how wrong the estimates have been for falling out of the 95% band completely. The graph shows in incontrovertible detail how the speed of global warming has been massively overestimated. Yet those forecasts have had a ruinous impact on the bills that we pay, from heating to car fuel and huge sums paid by councils to reduce carbon emissions. The odds have come down, adding that warming is likely to be significantly lower, Professor Allen says the higher estimates are now looking iffy. Oh, but Al Gore said that the science was in. Yeah, because Al Gore has a lot to make in carbon taxes if it is, and it isn't. Let's hear some people here. Global surface temperatures have not risen in 15 years. They make the high estimates unlikely. Pierce Forrester, climate change professor, Leeds University. Must be a conspiracy theorist. This changes everything. Global warming should no longer be the main deterrent of economic or energy policy. Dr. David Whitehouse, Global Warming Policy Foundation. Oh, another conspiracy theorist. They're, what he's saying is it should not be stopping oil companies from opening. Like Sarah Palin said, drill, baby, drill. Get us the hell out of the Middle East. Let them kill each other. I don't give a damn. Climate models are running too hot. Current flat trend may continue for two more decades. Professor Judith Curry, Georgia Institute of Technology. Predictions of global warming based on science's forecasts are of how fast increasing CO2 levels could cause temperature to rise directly led to Britain's Climate Change Act. This commits the UK to cut emissions by 80% by 2050. But now they found out that it was all a lie. Just like me, just like me, just like me have been saying, I sound like an Usher fan. Just like I have been saying forever, just like people like me have been saying forever, there is no man made, driven climate change. Agenda 21 is about controlling your life, not saving the planet. Get that through your heads. InfoWars, a prominent American scientist, calls for eco-dictatorship under UN rule. That's what it's about. Up-and-coming scientific publication, governments can and even should move beyond existent levels of public permission in order to shift norms, allowing public sentiment to catch up with the regulation. What that means is that the government should be allowed to set up things that affect your heating bill, your fuel, and do things to help stop man-made global warming, whether you like it or not, because it's for your own good. Bullshit! In a peer-reviewed paper by the American Institute of Biological Sciences titled Social Norms and Global Environmental Changes, to be published in the March 2013 edition of the Institute's yearly journal, Bioscience, a group of well-known scientists calls on government and scientists to start with a planned social engineering of norms and values in regards to environmental policies. In addition, they propose putting into effect all sorts of environmental fines and regulations in the spirit of Agenda 21, and for those of you that don't know, that is the one world government that you were warned about that is becoming under the UN. That is the one world government telling you and your nation what you need to pay, when you need to pay it, and how much you need to pay. 
It is saying, hey, your bills are going to go up whether you like it or not. We're going to make you have your house cooler. We're going to make gas so expensive that you can't take your family anywhere because it's for your own good. Are you pissed? Why, you should be. In addition, uh, wait, blah, blah, blah. in the spirit of Agenda 21, to hasten the social acceptance of increased governmental control. Did you hear that? Make you a prisoner until you like to be a prisoner. Stockholm Syndrome. Also, they propose that the scientific community as a whole should align itself with government through a concerted effort to change personal and social norms. Under the lie of global warming, so far in this show, we have found how the nuclear industry is allowed to poison the entire globe and they continue to build nuclear power plants when we know this is just an excuse and a way to bring in the weapons industry and to make a lot of money outside of the weapon industry. We've learned that man-made global warming is in fact a lie and we've learned that they want to take over our lives to stop global warming. I think it all tied together rather nicely, don't you? Two more things I'm going to get to and jump off here. This is from the Huffington Post. And again, I say it every time. I'm no Ariana Huffington fan. Stefan Slevin accepts $15.5 million settlement for two years in solitary confinement in a Mexico jail. A former inmate who suffered nearly two years in solitary confinement without a trial reached a settlement that makes him a multimillionaire. Stephen Slevin, 59, accepted a 15 pardon me, million dollar settlement on Tuesday, one of the largest civil rights prisoner payouts in American history, for the nightmarish 22 months he spent alone in the Dora Anna County Jail. Oh, the conditions that Seven endured ruined him, physically and mentally. He fell into a state of delirium, developed bed sores and fungus, and uh, to let you know how bad bed sores can be on a personal note, when my dad was dying of cancer and couldn't get up, he wasn't complaining about the cancer pain. He was complaining about the pain of the bed sores. So they're that bad. Developed bed sores and fungus and lost a significant amount of weight according to the lawsuit. His toenails grow so long that they curled under his toes. The Albuquerque Journal reported once in need of dental care, he had to pull his own tooth. Why did he get pulled over? This is, this is insane. And this is why, I'm going to say this ahead of time, we need to eliminate the DUI laws in this country. Eliminate them. We have laws against driving and hurting anyone. But this notion that we can just pull people over and ticket them for the smallest alcoholic offense is not the same as stopping drunk drivers. And Mothers Against Drunk Driving are a despicable organization, and I hate them. He was driving through New Mexico and arrested for a DWI, and he allegedly was in a stolen vehicle. Well, it was a car that he had borrowed from a friend. A friend had given him the car to drive cost country Coyote, Coyote Coit, told NBC News in January. Slevin claims that he never saw a judge, and that after three days, authorities transferred him to a solitary cell in a jail near the Mexican border without explanation. Finally, in 07, the charges were dropped. Slevin's Burly beard, overgrown hair, and droopy face hardly resembled the same person. How in the world do you take an American and go through his car and give him a DUI when you don't have any right to do that by law anyhow, but let's say you do, and then you can move him, move him to Mexico? Insane. I'm glad he's a millionaire and people, look, Almost everybody that gets a DUI is in drunk. They know. That's why they have this tier bullshit. It's really when you hit the third tier that you're really hurting there. Maybe the second tier. All the first tier people, they've done nothing wrong. They were never a threat to anybody. They were never impaired. That's why when you see the, uh, they say, this is what it's like to drive a car on three beers, and then they loosen the steering wheel. They loosen the steering wheel because otherwise the person's going to pass. Um, the Telegraph, last thing I want to get to. North Korea threatens nuclear attack on U.S. bases in Japan. This little Kim Jong-un tin, tin horn dictator is going to get his butt kicked, and I'm going to tell you why. I disagree with Ron Paul a little bit here. Ron Paul uh, came out today 
with uh, some information saying that we need to uh, not make such a big deal over the saber rattling. No, 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 I disagree. The Korean War was a legitimate war. It was a declared war. Now, whether or not you think we should have fought or not, that's you can argue that all day long. But it was claimed, it was declared, I should say, by Congress. Therefore, it's a legal war. There was never an end of the war. There was an armistice. And I really do believe, now come on, people. I, I'm one of the most anti-war people ever. But does anybody listening to this seriously believe that if we pulled out of there that North Korea would not just completely take over and slaughter like Mao Zedong did in China? Um, we're not over there like we are over there with Israel. Israel is creating problems just like the Palestinians are creating problems. South Korea is not creating problems. We have a legitimate uh, ally with them. I mean, we ally everybody that we think is convenient to blow somebody else up. I'm not in favor of that. He's a legitimate ally. And when we go over there and bomb him, it's going to be a legitimate target because this was a declared war. It's very rare that I disagree with Ron Paul, but I do on this one. The threat came one day after Pyongyang... Pyongyang... I'm so horrible with uh, foreign languages, but I'm pretty sure that's how it's pronounced. Condemn the use of the nuclear-capable bombers in the drills of unpardonable provocation. The aircraft are based at Anderson Air Force Base in the Pacific Island of Guam and flew over South Korea as part of an annual joint exercise while missile-carrying attack submarines can operate out of Japanese ports. Now, people have said, how would America like it if Mexico and China was to do it on our border? It's different. For one thing... We are not a threat to slaughter the Mexicans. That's pretty big. And again, this was a declared war. It, that means a lot. We need to get out of Syria. We needed to never get into Libya. This was a declared war. We cannot tolerate the U.S. carrying out nuclear strike drills, setting us up as targets and advertising them as strong warning messages, as spokesman for the North Korean military was quoted as saying by the state-run KCNA news agency. The U.S. should not forget that the Anderson base, as well as naval bases of Japan's main island in Okinawa, are all within range of our precise targets. Look, you're not going to frighten Japan by threatening to nuke them. As I just said, they've already done a good enough job nuking themselves. You don't want to mess with Japan right now, I'll tell you that. Because there are a lot of people who are tied into Japanese assets. And that's going to bring a lot of people that don't like America on America's side when this little tin horn dictator pushes it. For another thing, threatening the U.S. with nuclear weapons when the U.S. is doing nuclear drill strikes? I would argue that South Korea should be doing drill strikes. That's fine. That's different from threatening the nuke country which they did. As the U.S. has started naked nuclear blackmail, we will move on to corresponding military chaos. Look, this little bastard is not going to be able to do anything to anyone. All he's going to be able to do is fire one or two or a barrage of nukes, most of which are going to be blasted over the Pacific Ocean. And since Japan has already poisoned the Pacific Ocean, it's not going to matter a whole lot. One or two of those bombs might hit, and then one of two things are going to happen. We will level North Korea to the point where there's nothing but rubble, or, God forbid, some nation will nuke North Korea, in which case South Korea is still in a really bad way. Unfortunately, that is the correct view. Thank you for listening, friends. Good night. God bless. I want to give a shout out to the uh, Wounded Warriors Project. I've been telling everyone that if you promote the, uh, the show, share the show, I will pump your favorite charity. And that is what I just did. The Wounded Warrior Project is a wonderful project. Thank you for listening to The Correct Views. Please donate if you can. All money goes to a better show. Good night. God bless. And thanks for listening.